Hello, hello. All right. Today we'll go over uh, this week's class. Um, I'm going to be going real quick so you can pause the video uh, to uh, double check if, uh, if I'm going too fast for you. But overall, we're going to move real quick. Uh, we're just going to be making a shield and a spear. And I'm even going to, if I have time, I'll show a couple of couple of other ways than what we showed in class as well so um comma to get rid of the light box uh, we're just gonna drop you know anything it's whatever t for edit mode make polymers 3d is gonna change your options over here and i'm gonna make sure that audio is not too high all right it's gonna be a gamble but we'll see Alright, so we're gonna go down here to initialize. Uh, we're gonna start with the shield. Okay, this is gonna be a basic uh, kite shield. Of course, it can be any shape we want. Um, so for this one, we'll just do a Q cube, Shift F, and on this. So uh, W, we're gonna squish this down a little bit, even a little bit more. Now while we're at that point, BZM, we go to our, um, our Z modeler. Over here it's going to be insert by default if we just start a zebra. So we're going to hold Alt, get rid of that edge, and it's going to go all the way around. Okay. All right, next, notice I'm clicking in, I'm holding Shift. That's what's causing it to snap like this. Perspective is off, remember that. Okay, Control Alt, I'm going to unmask bottom vertices W and just move them down control drag over here to just clear the mask control alt again we're gonna grab these and we're gonna squish them in like so go out we're gonna grab this one and we're gonna just move it up like this and let's say I want the shield to be a little bit wider right let's just say so I can still do this kind of stuff right all right so far so good um, so I want to add some, I want to add some geometry and we're going to do it a slightly different way. We're going to do it a slightly different way. So <clears throat> instead of going, uh, instead of going directly to, um, to, to, uh, dynamic subdivision, we're going to start by going to a uh, geometry crease. Okay. Cause we already know that there are certain ones that are gonna are gonna crease for us based on the poly group, right? Crease PG. And there's a couple that won't crease for us. So I do want this edge over here, but I don't want these two over here. And I do want one over here in the corner, right? And remember creasing is what allows it to uh, stay sharp even after we subdivide. So I'm just gonna use this as a starting point and we're gonna see. So uh, crease PG, okay. So it creased everything that is the edge of the polygroup. Again, polygroups indicated by the colors. So I know that this one and this one I don't want. So to save myself even more time, I'm gonna hit X. Notice that brings up symmetry, right? So my mouse is over here, but it's indicating that the one on the other side that's gonna be affected as well. So I'm gonna hover over this edge, hold space, go to crease. Edge is fine for this one. Hold Alt, there you go. Now I'm getting rid of this crease, and I want to add a crease right here at the bottom. Okay, that's it. A lot faster, a lot faster. So we're going to have a sharp edge around the perimeter, a sharp edge on, on these corners on the sides, and a sharp edge over here. All right, so far so good. And um, so a reminder, you can go to insert, for example and insert an edge with symmetry on, it's gonna give us an extra edge on that other side, right? And this is just in case you wanted to do anything extra fancy, like let's say I'm grabbing this middle one and I'm just giving it a little bit more personality, something like this, okay? Let's just see what it looks like. Could look good, could look bad, I don't know. So, we can, hold, we can press D to go to the dy dynamic subdiv, but since I already know what I'm doing, we're going to do control D to just add subdivision levels over here. Control D. There you go. Adding those in there. Okay. Uh, Shift F. 
and uh, right now I'm at subdivision level two. I want to, you know, I changed my mind. I do want to have a crease here. So right here on this one. Uh, so I'm going to go shift D, go down subdivision level, right? So once I created the subdivision levels, D goes up, shift D goes down. And if I wanted to create a new one, it's control D, but you want to do that at the top level. So shift F to bring back a polyframe. And with this, I'm going to go back to crease and I'm going to crease this edge, just that one, okay? Uh, shift F to turn this off and then D to go back up. Uh, it'll give me a nice little form over there, perhaps. I don't know if I like it or not, but the whole point is just, you know, to give you all the options. Um, right now I'm at subdivision level two. Um, so one cool thing is that when we're at here, we can hit uh, whenever we're at subdivision uh, level one. If we need to get rid of the subdivision, we hit Del higher for delete higher, and that's going to get rid of subdivision level two. If I'm at subdivision level two, right, you can delete the lower uh, over here. So let's go ahead and do that. You see now some of those, I'm going to control the, you see uh, those edges, shift D, those edges remain uh, fully uh uh, fully visible and uh, not at all transparent but once we go up we get those extra edges that get added you can kind of tell these ones are a little bit more grayed out compared to uh, these ones once I delete the lower subdivision this whole subdivision uh, the topology is just baked in so this is just the way it is now okay uh, the cool thing of uh, being able to do that is it gives us a little bit more topology to play with so we can go uh, click on the customize, do bend arc. And then I want to get a nice side angle because I can bend this backwards and I'm going to have a much nicer curve than if I was if I were to do it with lower topology. And I can give it a little bit more of this as well if I wanted to. You don't have to. You don't have to. All right. Once I'm happy with it, I'm go back to the cogwheel for custom customize, hit accept. And now this is um shift f this is my current shield now of course i want to have some more topology on this so control d right now i have none so this is my lowest subdivision level control d is going to give me a few extra control d again just want it to be nice and smooth because i can still kind of see those edges control d okay um again this is really just it's not really a fully functional shield we don't have anything back here but that's fine we're working with basic forms for now. We're working with basic forms for now. Um, let's take a look at painting real quick. Uh, so I'm gonna go to RGB, turn off the ad. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's do BST, I like the standard brush. So again, RGB, turn off the ad. So if I give it a certain color, you know, it's gonna change everything to it because my color information is not turned on, which is that brush right here. Boop. All right, so now that I have that color information turned on, again, there's nothing there, just a blank piece of paper, basically. So we can paint in uh, that detail. Okay, if you wanted to do something fancy, you know, there you go, it's a heart, it's pixelated. The reason it's pixelated is because I believe if we got rid of the polys, no, no, never mind. So yeah, it's just, the reason it's pixelated is because you're only ever painting one point, okay? So you see this gradient, it just goes from this point to this point, and it knows this point doesn't have any of the red, but this point does, okay? And that's why you're getting it kind of low res. So again, your poly painting is going to be affected by how, many, how much of resolution you have. So for example, if I control D one more time, Okay, I'm up to five. Now it's gonna look a little bit smoother. You can still see a little bit of this pixelation right here. If I control D uh, one more time to go to six, and generally for what we're doing in this class, don't go over six, because it's gonna start go going out of control with your uh, point count. But see, it's gonna look much smoother. It does it does pixelate it when I move around it just to conserve memory. Uh, but generally speaking, it's gonna look a lot smoother. So. I don't expect y'all to do anything too fancy with this. We're going to get more advanced and more cool later down the line. Um, but for now, just be aware that that is the case. 
Uh, one last thing I want to do with this shield is um, I'm gonna give it a give it a lot of things glass like a nice little warm kind of metallic look. Grab this metal one. I don't. I'm not a big fan of these other metal ones. I particularly enjoy this one. Okay, but that just me. I'm not. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do on that one. It's fine. So I can do this right now. It's still um, kind of white and gray because it's not. Uh, it's not carrying over this color information. So with RGB and MRGB, you can go to um, yeah MRGB on because uh, right now, even though we have the white color information baked in, right on here, the material information is not baked in. So whenever we change the material, it's just going to change it back, you know. So to actually bake the material and color in, even if we see it here, it's not baked in. We're going to go to color with MRGB on color fill object now this is our shield okay now this is our shield okay and you know whatever you wanna whatever you wanna do feel free just you know just make it cool if you want but even if you give me flat color on this assignment I'm totally fine with it totally fine with it gradient if you want this is how I do gradients by the way if you wanted to if you ever wondered uh, extra symmetry around here I lowered my RGB intensity Greater, lower bigger brush Cold recedes. So it looks like it's a little bit warmer at the top. Whatever. It's subtle. It's whatever. For now, just get used to practicing the basic tools. Okay. All right, next, we're going to append or insert anything. doesn't matter what it, what it is. This is why I create those crazier, wackier forms, just to show that it does not matter what it is. Because we're going to initialize. We're going to grab two-cylinder Y. Uh, two, uh, two on the X, two on the Z, and one on the Y. Hit that. You can get this guy. Okay. Now, Shift F, and I'm gonna go right here to Solo, right here. And remember, when you're Solo, don't hit Dynamic Solo, because what that does is it just to conserve memory. It's just gonna make everything disappear only when you're moving, but it's gonna bring it back when you let go. Okay. So this is what that Dynamic word up here does. You want the button. Not the dynamic. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be the the kind of the shaft of the spear, right? So we already remember this. We can go to geometry, crease. Uh, I already have it open. Remember when we created that Y cylinder, he gave us a different polygroup at the bottom uh, and top versus the one on the lateral sides. So we're just gonna do crease PG on this one. And if we hit control D a couple of times for those subdivision levels up here, I'm already up to three, you know, whatever. Um, go out of solo mode. So uh, remember the, the green box over here is going to give you some of that height. And if you hold alt, it'll change it on the blue and red and not the green. It's going to ignore that green on that scale, you know, so this is going to be incredibly uh, important okay, so we got this one shift F and step out mm -hmm. I'm gonna move that shield back a little bit okay. all right so we got this one um, what else do we want to do to this we'll get the the metal part at the top tip of the spear and you know all that all that good stuff uh, so we're gonna start with uh, another cylinder so for this we're gonna go to sub tool and we're gonna grab uh, we're gonna insert insert anything doesn't matter what it is right because we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go to initialize um, just Q sill whatever now on this one we're going to um, 
uh, we, we can do we can do crease the way we did I'm just gonna do the opposite way just because every time you see something different you learn something new okay so again BZM for crease I just want that bottom one so crease that is fine one so one and solve this two three four five six seven Notice that I'm waiting until that line becomes highlighted and then I click it eight. Okay. And there we go. So now if we hit control D, give it some top some subdivision levels. It's gonna be kind of nice like this. Shift F, go out of solo. Now let's scale that. So make it somewhat longer, but really hold alt and just yeah, make it way too long. So like this. We just want that transition from the wood part to the metal part uh, over here and you want to make sure those corners are not visible if they are you know you can move it up or you can just uh, make it a little bit wider it's totally up to you it's totally up to you okay that's most of what we got for the spear at the moment um let's do the the head of the spear the tip which is going to be uh, again, sub tool. We're gonna insert anything, doesn't matter what. And we're gonna go down to initialize, grab a cube on this time around, and uh, we'll keep the res to 111 on that cube. Okay, now we're gonna start rotating it on this green, but we're gonna hold shift until we get to 45 that way the point is pointing this way and that'll give us the outer edges and the side edges right um shift f so now that we have it we're not gonna worry about the size for now because we're gonna scale it down to uh match this later so for now we're gonna solo this um now right now since we rotated you notice that the gizmo moves with the box but we rotated it to that 40 nice 45 degree angle so now if we reset the orientation by holding alt which is unlocking this and then hitting reset orientation that's going to reset the orientation of the cube and not i'm sorry of the pivot point and not the cube if we don't hold alt it's going to just reset the cube altogether because the pivot point and the cube are linked but Control z if we just hold alt it'll only do it to the pivot point right and that allows us to kind of squish that in a little bit and give it that nice bladed look you know All right, back to solo we are on shift f now uh, this time since i did 111 i'm missing out on a couple of things so bzm sorry q bzm so i need a couple of edges here so the way i can do this is hold space on edge insert and i can insert a single edge loop or we could do multiple edge loops let's just do that real quick um but if we do, if you do that this way, um, just do keep polygroup for now, because I want to use creasing on this later. So keep the polygroup so it's not going to change it. Because if you don't do that, alternate polygroups and same polygroups is just going to change your existing polygroups. In fact, I'll show you. Alternate polygroups. So you hold here, and you're going to pull up, and you see that it's going to be alternating, right? And if you do the same polygroup, it's going to create a new kind of it'll keep everything the same, which is not what I want. I want this one and this one to be different polygroups so that the creasing can come into effect. So I'm just gonna say key polygroup and that's not gonna affect anything, okay? And all I want is two. All I want is two. There we go. All we want is two. Um, so I wanna condense all of those points into a single one. So a couple ways to do that. Um, and we can turn symmetry on for this. So hover over this point, go to stitch, two points to end point. No, I want midpoint because I don't want this one. I'll show you. Uh, to end point, if I click on this and then on that one, it's gonna take it to that side, okay? And I want them to meet in the middle. So to midpoint and I click on this one and on this one. And that's gonna bring it to the middle. Now on those side ones, oops, on those side ones, I do want it end point or start point. But if I do start point, then I wanna start at the middle. OK, 
Okay, and then it's gonna tell this last one. Oops. Tell the last one to go to the middle. So same result, it's just whatever workflow uh, you prefer at this time. Okay. Uh, next, I wanna unmask those bottom points. And I'm gonna hold Alt because it's masked. If I uh, reset the orientation, if I, uh, if I, sorry, not Alt. If I uh, do the go to unmask mesh center, it's gonna go down to the center of the unmasked part. Now you notice it's not going to the center because I'm in symmetry mode. So it's gonna go to the center of each symmetrical part. So I'm gonna turn off symmetry with X. And now I'm gonna send it to the center and it's gonna be right there at the center, okay? So now with this, I can just kind of scale that in a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want it to go to a point at the bottom. It's just where it emerges from the thing. Uh, so this is fine. Then I'm going to unmask that top point. Send it up to create that nice uh, spear perspective. Maybe I want to move those up a little bit. Just use your references. Remember, you have see-through mode right here. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. And now you, you can see on the side, we got that teardrop shape, you know, it's coming up from the point and then it's going back in. And this is where we want it to kind of go into the metal part. Uh, next, we want to hit it with that crease geometry, crease, crease PG, which does not mean crease for the whole family. Once more, it means crease polygroup. And since we have alternating polygroups, this is why I went through that trouble in saving them. I'm gonna hit crease polygroup and it's gonna give me nice edges running around exactly where I want them. From this one, I'm gonna hit shift F and because there's no creasing here, when I hit control D, it's gonna start smoothing it out for me. Control D again, all right, control D again. There you go. Got that nice spearhead. Now we can deal with the scale. It's huge. So I'm gonna reset orientation just to be sure. Send it to the center every now and then, you know, double check this. And then we're just gonna eyeball it into position. And you can always tweak the proportion if you want it, you know. I'm not saying if there's a lot of spears like this, but it is up to you. And I wouldn't worry too much about the transition. Again, we're not really trying to go for um, too nitpicky at this point. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to work. I want y'all to learn basics. Okay, so don't worry too much about the transition. We're gonna deal with it later. Okay. So we got that spear. Now I want to um, give it some color. So over here on the metal, remember we have all those different sub tools, which I do recommend naming, okay? So, um, quick before I do anything else, what, what are the parts of the spear? Let's see, I'm Googling this right now. Uh, parts of spear, okay. So I just wanna use, okay, that's Nordic. Not helpful, not helpful. I'm trying to figure out what to name this. That's fine. I'll just uh, do this. Uh, rename shield. It's good to be. It's good to be uh, curious and always try to learn new things about what you do. So I know this is maybe the shaft for it. And this is gonna be the tip. Uh, I'm just gonna call this one. I don't know sleeve. I don't know what the official name for it is. I'll look it up. Okay. So. Um, let's see. So we want to give it colors, right? So, um, another one. So we're going to go to, uh, BST again. MRGB is already remembered. Uh, we're going to change the, we're going to keep the standard for the wooden part. We're going to do that per, uh, first. So we're just going to get a nice warm. That's too orange. Something like this, nice and neutral. Warm gray, maybe light, maybe darker, if you want. Totally up to you, totally up to you. 
and we're gonna go to color fill object what happened it's a little bit lighter than it looked before maybe it has the wrong material that's fine we can tweak it and this color fill object there you go a little bit more and color fill object something like this I like yeah back to here we're gonna change the material to metal that looks pretty good actually but I want to make it a little bit darker a little bit warmer somewhere around here maybe bring it to here all right then color fill object remember mrgb is selected mrgb means it's going to bake the material and the rgb color however when you're painting do not paint material because it does not do transitions well when you're painting only paint with rgb mode so keep the baseline material uh, the same color fill object color fill object okay there we go we got it nice and baked in at this point we have a basic spear basic shield yeah, nothing too fancy but a cool start cool start okay um let's do one cool thing let's do one cool thing okay just want to show you one cool thing um what are we gonna do let's do a round shield round shield okay this is gonna be super difficult check it out uh we're just gonna insert anything whatever sphere cool uh initialize now we're gonna do q cylinder z okay now we're actually gonna uh, nope we're actually gonna do two two one two two one Q cylinder Z, there we go. We're gonna solo this. This is gonna be a round shield, more or less. We're gonna squish it. Okay. There you go, we're done. I'm just kidding. Um, let's try to figure this out. Yeah, okay. and get a little buckler out of this. Uh, so again, uh, geometry. We'll do geometry and crease, crease PG, and that way we're already gonna get, we're already gonna get this nice roundness out of it. Okay, uh, I could do even a little bit more. Control D. There you go. Four subdivs. Where is that? Okay, five is still safe. I'm still safe. Okay. Now, this is stuff that we're gonna learn later, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay. I'm gonna go all the way down right here. Um, I'm gonna del higher. I'm gonna duplicate this. You'll see why later. I'm gonna duplicate this, but I'm still staying with this. Okay. And over here on the shield, I'm just gonna rename it Kite Shield. Kite Shield. This is bonus. It's not required for class, but if you're interested, it's a video, so it's up to you if you want to do it. Um, so I have this one. I'm going to call this one um, uh, Buckler Rim. I'm going to call this one rename Buckler Wood. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, Shift F. So this is a couple of new things. Don't worry about them for now. This is just for fun, just if you're curious. Just to show you a couple more things in BZM. BZM, okay. So we're gonna QMesh a poly. This is just a cool tool to show what we have. So we can QMesh. Uh, instead of QMesh, we'll do inset. That's the one that we keep selecting by accident. Instead of a single poly, we're gonna do poly group all. See what happened? One more time. Inset, polygroup all. I'm gonna worry about any of this. And then I'm just holding it in just so. 
it's a uh, some of this okay now I'm gonna go over to this poly group uh, I'm gonna do Q mesh go back to Q mesh single poly we're gonna do poly group all it's gone it's gone and we have a nice rim for that and uh, looks like the edges are still mostly fine I don't like this edge right there right this edge on the inside so I'm gonna do insert is fine multiple and then single and then alt bye bye okay, that edge is gone now we're gonna go back to uh, crease then this is all bonus stuff this is just if you're curious you know it's not required for homework but if you want it's gonna be pretty cool all right so I'm gonna do crease We're gonna do crease and um, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, just ever so slightly, just a little bit. Definitely, you wanna make it thicker. That way, it uh, pops out when you're dealing with uh, other shield, right? So, um, I'm gonna hold shift to uh, to uh, unhide. I'm sorry, to hide everything and just keep those two visible. Okay, shift F to go back out here. So. On this one, I want it to have a uh, wooden texture, let's say. Um, and I'll uh, give it... Thank you. A little bit redder. Something like this, maybe. Maybe something like this. More gray. Sure. Um, right here, so uh, color. Make sure I'm on MRGB, not the uh, color, fill object. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this one. Uh, I'm gonna give it something similar. Metal. Just want it a little bit colder, maybe a little bit darker. Maybe something like this. Oh, maybe lighter. Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. Color, fill object. Okay, so, um, then you can kind of paint on this. So let's hit Control D, Control D, Control D. Okay, we're bringing it to um, four. Let's do five. And we have to select this other one, and then Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Okay, now we have a nice round shield that we can paint on this. Um, what else do I want to do to this? So, well, you can, man, you can go out, you can have fun. So, um, we can insert a cone, right? We can insert a cone. Um, and we can bake this metal right into it off the bat. So, BZM. Uh, whatever we were yeah, MRGB as long as you have MRGB it's gonna the color is gonna fill that object okay so um, so I'm gonna rotate this front and hold shift until I get 90 degrees and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit right here squish it a little bit continue scaling it down and remember that I'm not moving it off the center axis so I know that it's gonna stay at the center axis now we got a little bit of a a pokey thing you know and of course it's very uh, i'm gonna solve this um and of course it's very insane right here so we're gonna we're gonna talk about cleaning that topology we're gonna talk about cleaning that topology for sure hmm. all right no we're gonna do it now i'm gonna delete this too nasty okay over here we'll just pick a sphere notice that all of those options are not really there right so a sphere so if you pick a cone and with shift F right you can see that this is before you do hit polymer mesh 3d okay you can go to initialize and it gives you uh, how many divisions you want it to have I want it to have none okay right here now when I make this polymer mesh 3d 
now it's an object that I can control and over here in the sub tool I can give it a name buckler spike okay so now the name here is buckler spike right so I can go back to my shield and I can insert buckler spike right here and there you are now you don't have that extra topology shift F. so now I can rotate you hold shift push you in Oops, make, sure, um, make sure solo is off and because I have buckler spike um, let's solo this back on let's see and I don't and I do want to separate it into poly groups which is again something else that we're gonna deal with later just bonus just bonus just bonus Poly groups right here. And then we're gonna do group by normals, and it's gonna give us this group separate from this group, which allows us to go to geometry, hit crease PG, and now I'm gonna have that sharp edge. Okay, so that we'll smooth this, but not gonna smooth the transition between this and that. Okay, go back to solo. Uh, shift F is gonna be off. I'm gonna put it right here. Cool, and then I'm gonna hit control. Oh, it's gonna smooth that point though, isn't it? Control D, that's not cool. Control D, control D, control D, control D. There you go. Sure. And not the best, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. All right, one last bonus. One last bonus for today. One last bonus for today. We're gonna talk about it in class. Uh, I'm going to, I want to make sure that, um, this color is baked in. That's fine. I'm going to let you do a lot with some different models. It's totally fine. Um, one more thing I kind of want to do on this is, now for you, if you do this path, you know, you can paint in the metal, I'm sorry, the wood bits. Uh, one more thing I want to do is I want to have a few... Um, if you can studs on the on the metal part so for that purpose I will insert a let's do a sphere yeah we're not gonna worry too much about efficiency right now I'm just gonna do a sphere I'm gonna scale it all the way down and then again okay so there is that sphere right here okay now check this out, this is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to move it right to the top, right to about here. I can eyeball the middle part, okay? And do this. Now I got this one on that side, right? So now, uh, with W, I can hold Alt to send this uh, home. This is this one, this one. Okay, I'm going to hold Alt. Now, because I held Alt, only the pivot went to the world. Zero, zero, zero. This is what that house does, but this one stayed over there. And what this allows us to do is to rotate this around, right? Now here's the really cool part. If you hold control while you rotate, then it's going to, eh, no. Um, if you hold control while you move and you move it kind of into position, okay? And then you can rotate that many degrees as it would like 180 degrees i'm gonna clear the mask i can probably move this just a little bit to move it back into place it's fine and then i'm gonna do this hold shift cool and i'm gonna hold control move this a little bit more just about eh, not what i wanted no an extra one I could place one let's do let's see if this is uh, 10 15 we are 45 degrees here so let's do let's do one at 60 and one at 30 okay and the control we're just gonna yeah it does that
just want to hold control and not hold control. Uh, you don't want to hold control and let go because then it will create something else. But you just hold control, keep it held this whole time. Move it just a little bit and then move it another 30 degrees or so. And yeah, control held. about 60 you should be fine hold control again oops i like all right this one and then about 30 degrees right here i'm gonna clear the mask check this out pretty cool yeah that was just a bonus thing this is not expected for homework i just want to show you some of the things that we can do in the program and since it's video if you're a really super um, interested in making these kind of assets you know it's right here for you all right hope you all found this interesting uh, regarding the submission um, regarding the submission what I'm gonna want is So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide everything else uh, to scale stuff. We're gonna leave on the stuff that you want left on. And then the W, you see those lines over there? We can scale, we can click this to scale it all down, whatever is visible, right? And then, um, and we can also kind of move it forward a little bit. We want it to, or even back. We're not back, too far back. And I'm turning this off because to move it with this on, it's just gonna move that thing. And that's not what I want. Okay. I just gotta remember this a little bit. Oh, that seems cool enough for me. Here, spear and shield. So I want to get a nice cool angle for one of the shots. So because the spear is longer, what we can do is have a, an angled shot kind of be something like this. And it gives me those, uh, those cool angles. I'm going to hit shift S and then I can zoom. Uh, then get hold shift and get those kind of more uh, more tame angles. So here's front shift S. Here's uh, I don't know, we'll do it like this shift S. And do a side view. Shift S, do quarter view if you want. Shift S, we'll do back here. Like so, and we don't need Shift S on that last one, but that's fine. Then we're gonna go pop open our snip and sketch, right? I'm gonna hit new, and we'll just grab render or our you know our viewport part right and then you can just turn that in on the forms on the assignment that uh i'll have up right after this video all right hope that helps let me know if you have any questions uh we do have tutors uh in the building over this weekend and uh yeah please have a safe and enjoyable uh labor day and we'll see you all next week